to the presence of the Lord this morning. For those listening or watching online, I welcome you as well to another time of fellowship. I want to thank God for the last week in the month of January, the miracle service and the video. Can we celebrate God for all that he did for us last weekend? Let's give God praise. Let's give God. We are, oh my God. If you are appreciating Pastor Femi, maybe that's sufficient. But if you are thanking God for everything that he did, all that he wrought, that the hand of the Lord has wrought in our lives. Father, we thank you this morning. We are grateful people. We thank you and we celebrate you. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Glory to God. I want us to read a scripture this morning. One scripture. As the Lord will guide us, if we have to read others, we would also read. But I want to speak on some, something. I don't want to call it a teaching, but maybe it's preaching, whatever it is this morning. I just trust that the Lord will use me and that we'll be blessed. Something that we have heard over and over. I believe that as a, as a Christian, a child of God, you must have heard this message before. But the Holy Ghost said to me, Yes, indeed, it's my, he <clears throat> my year, my season, my time, and my purpose will be established. He said, it's also great that the people of God will be reminded of, thank you, sir, who I really am. Because we cannot walk with someone you don't know. The Bible says, can two walk together except there is an agreement. You can only agree with someone you have some form of trust or confidence in. When trust... A friend of mine said to me so many years back, he said, when you take that word T out of trust, it becomes rust. He said, when you take that word, the letter T out of trust, what is left is rust. And um, you only trust someone you have some level of confidence in. That you can go to bed and you can be almost certain of their disposition towards you, what they do, what they can't do, what they would say, what they can't say about you, what they represent in your life, what they don't represent in your life. As some form of association, you have communed some friendship for you to be able to trust them. And if it's the year of the Holy Ghost, then we need to ask ourselves how much of trust we have in the Holy Ghost. We can't trust Him if we don't know Him. It all starts from the form of the place of knowledge. And so we, in January, we looked at the Life Giver series and some of the things that the Holy Spirit will help us or is helping us to do, you know, as we go on in the kingdom and the year 2022, we looked at his ministry towards us, opening our eyes, giving us understanding, bringing us out of every state of confusion, darkness and all that. But the Spirit said to me, well, there's no mistake in God. It's better we go back to the very beginning where we understand fully who he is and why he came. And if I ask the church this morning, who is the Holy Spirit? Or better still, who is the Holy Spirit to you? I'm sure I'll get a number of answers. Maybe we should try. Can we get three people? You're sure of yourself. You're sure of the person of the Spirit. Who is the Holy Spirit to you? I just want an answer. Anyone? Who is the Holy Ghost to you? Is there anyone? You can see people smiling. You don't have to go to the Bible to know who the Holy Ghost is. So I'm not asking who the Holy Ghost is. I said, who is the Holy Ghost to you? Anyone? Your director. Thank you. Any other answer? Thank you, sir. Can somebody echo that for me, please? Comforter. Thank you. Any last one? Strengthener. Helper. Who is that? Your men. Oh, wow. The Holy Ghost as your mentor. Let's go to John chapter 14 and verse 15 to 17. <clears throat> um, I believe it will be projected. Let me also read from here. Okay. Let me read as it's projected for the sake of time. If you love me, keep my commandments. This is Jesus to the disciples. If you love me, keep my commandment. And then it says in verse 15, 16, 
and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Can we read that together? One to go. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, I mean another helper, and he will abide with you forever. Um, <clears throat> I'd like you to take note of the word. It will give you another helper, particularly the word or the lines, another helper. Um, if you have been a student of the word in Divine Glory Christian Church, pastor has done a great deal of teaching on um, this word, helper, and what this scripture means. I'm just going to also flow in the same spirit of what we have already known, and trust God that there will be more light, more understanding and revelation, insight, as we look at this scripture this morning. All right, this is um, about the time Jesus was saying his farewell to his disciples. It was about the time for him to depart. And Jesus represented many things to them. For Peter, James, John, Andrew, all of the disciples, he meant different things, and there were things he meant to them in common. Uh, these were people who had abandoned their primary jobs and they have decided to follow. And so for them, it was their sustenance. He was their provider. They, he, he looked up after them like a man would look after a child. Peter all of a, stu all of a sudden stopped earning from his profession as a fisherman, a professional fisherman. And he needed to lean or depend. This is an adult, not a young man. He had to go back to the days of his youth when he was still under tutors and parents. And they had to lean on Jesus for daily sustenance. They had to lean on Jesus for daily provision. For them to go from place to place, they had to lean on Jesus. They couldn't go anywhere without Jesus instructing them. They couldn't pay their fares. They couldn't pay their taxes anymore. Remember that time when, you know, Jesus was accosted and his disciples... You have to pay your tax. They didn't have a living anymore. No savings in the bank. And they largely or generally dependent on Jesus for everything. Even accommodation. Remember when, um, I, I remember one guy came to him at some point. He said, I want to follow you. He said, the foxes have holes. The son of man does not have a place to lay his head. But literally they were going with him everywhere he was going. Everywhere he went. Everywhere he slept. You know, they were moving together. They only visited their families occasionally because they, at that time, had given everything, everything about them. No wonder they asked him in the book of Luke and said, Jesus, we have left all. And when you say the word all, you mean all, everything. He said, we have left all to follow you. What do we stand to gain? I'm sure that there will be people who made jest, who talked about them. You had a lie, for God's sake. Why would you resign your job and be following this man who used to be a carpenter? All of a sudden, he calls himself the, himself the Messiah, the anointed one. And then you leave your life. Matthew, tax collector, I mean, rich man, abandoned everything to follow this so-called Messiah, who they were all almost older than anyway. And they said to him, what do we have to gain after leaving everything? And Jesus said, no man who has left father, mother, meaning they left fathers and mothers. Wife, Husbands, I mean, they left everything. And Jesus was speaking generally. He said, even houses, everything that in this world will not reap a hundredfold and even in the world to come. And this was the man they had looked up to, dependent on, and all of a sudden he told them, I'm going. And I'm sure Peter was thinking, how do I go back to my profession? How do I go back to my life? I've left this whole thing for three and a half years. Some other fishermen, businesses have taken over. We can't reopen anymore. We are not in business again. It will take a long time to go back and then recover, you know, from where we stopped. And it was a sad news. And don't wonder Peter looked at you and said, you know what? Whatever it will take, you are going nowhere. Where you die, I will die. You are now my sustenance. I eat from you, feed from you, live on you, go everywhere. I bet everything about my life is tied around you, Jesus. You are going nowhere. He said, even if it means dying with you, I will die with you. And Jesus said, be of good cheers. Be comforted. Because even though I'm living physically, I'm going to send to you another helper. 
another helper. And that word helper, like we have heard over and over in this house, spoken in Greek, is the word parakletos, another helper. And if you hear the word helper, ordinarily what comes to mind would mean somebody who gives assistance or provides, you know, assistance whenever it is needed. But that word in its original Greek being interpreted could not really find a single word to interpret it. And so there are several definitions or several words that word parakletos has been interpreted into in English language. And that's what we want to consider this morning. That when Jesus said, I will not be with you physically anymore, but I'm going to send another to come and stand in my stead. And I'm making you that promise that he will come and he will be with you. And the beautiful thing about this another helper, permit me to speak that way, that I'm sending to you is that it will abide with you forever. How, how beautiful. I have only stayed with you, Peter, for three and a half years, but this one that is coming will be with you in life and in death. So when you say forever, it means that even after now, it will be with you after this life. And no wonder Jesus said, I will show you how he can be with you even in the afterlife. He said, for thou will not abandon my soul in the realm of the dead. You will not let your only one see corruption. And Jesus was raised by the power of God. He was raised by the Spirit of God. The Holy Ghost was actively, fully involved in the resurrection. He didn't abandon him. And so Jesus had to lay a typical template for the disciples to see that this one does not go. Even after death, he's still there. Who is the helper? What is the meaning of the helper? Who is the Holy Ghost? And so if you want to call it, it's a very simple teaching this morning um, that I'm bringing to us or reintroducing to us the pressing of the Holy Ghost. There are people here who have been born again for 30, 40 years. I believe that you have worked with the Holy Ghost and you know him maybe better than myself. But I'll just ask that everyone will open our hearts to receive the ministry of the Spirit again. A paracletos is one who is called an advocate, comforter, a helper, a consoler. A paracletos is one who is an advocate, a comforter, a consoler, a helper. One who is called to stand alongside another or another person is beyond the bodyguard. You can get a bodyguard or appoint a bodyguard for your children if you can afford it. And you can ask them to be with your children everywhere they go. But there is a limit to the work of an ADC. You see the ADC going with the governor or the president everywhere. But he won't go with him into the toilet. He won't go into, with him into the bathroom. He won't go in, with him into some private corners. There are some places he will tell you, this is your final destination. I've seen drivers who have been very close to their... Uh, bosses in, in this world and they literally go with them everywhere but there are junctions that no man can go with you everybody has that place in life where they call private everybody has that line that you have drawn that even your wife, your spouse may not be able to enter with you you know when pastor was talking to us about Paul last week when he described his first defense and how everybody left him and God stood with him the definition of this paracletos we are describing the Holy Ghost is one who does not know private. He does not know privacy. He does not consider anywhere too private for him to not go with you. He goes in to every place, into every corner, everywhere with you. I said to people jokingly, I said, well, it may not work for some other people, but for me, I discovered that most of the revelations or the deep revelations of knowing God that I find it's always in my toilet, in my bathroom, in my private. Uh, it's so funny that it's not like he doesn't speak to me in another place. But I discovered that there's an ambience. It's just like there's an open tap. Every time I go in there, even when I'm not ready, I hear his voice. He speaks like never before. The Holy Ghost is that companion that has been called, commissioned fully by God to stand on your behalf or stand alongside with you without any boundary he doesn't stop anywhere he goes everywhere with you and that's the first meaning of that word paracletos 
He doesn't know any boundary. He does not know any privates. He's with you everywhere. As you're in church this morning, he's here. You go to work, he's with you. You're driving, he's there. Everywhere you turn, the Holy Ghost, you may not recognize his presence. You may not even feel his presence. But he's with you as long as you are born again. In fact, in the midst of your tears, the Holy Ghost is there. In the midst of that confused state of your life, the Holy Ghost is still there. Through the fires, he is there. Everywhere he does not stop. There is no limit to his presence in the life of a believer. The second meaning of the paracletos is one who has been called to intercede on behalf of a people or a person. The Holy Ghost is one that has been called to intercede on behalf of a person. He speaks, he pleads, he advocates on behalf of a person. And so I was describing this morning the ministry of Moses in the workers in training class. I said even though Moses was gifted, he was the one that God gave all the graces and anointing because he communed with God on the mountain. Moses could not speak to the people even though he carried all the power. And God recognized the fact that he could not communicate the grace that he carried. He was a depository of the anointing. But he could not be a channel to pass down the anointing in spoken words. And God anointed or called another one in the person of Aaron to speak like another helper to Moses or on behalf of Moses. And you can almost picture that everything that Moses needed to say, Moses would speak to the ears of Aaron and say, this is what I want to say. He may not say it fluently. His words may not be clear because he became a stammerer. But Aaron had that grace to be able to pick what Moses needed to say and brought it in a communicable way, the way the people would understand to the end that the miracles would be projected from the mouth of Aaron. The signs, everything that needed to be said as the word of God to the people in that time was communicated via the instrumentality of Aaron. And that's who the Holy Ghost stands to be in your life. That when you stand before the judge of this world, the judge of the earth, the Bible calls him, and the accuser of the brethren is also in attendance. The Bible says he accuses us day and night. The devil never stops to accuse you. You may not know. Your eyes may not be open to see the ministry of, of Satan, the, accus the, the, the accuser or the ministry of accusation. But every day, even as you're seated now in church, is before God accusing and saying, no, he's not deserving of the blessing that is packaged for this service. And where you cannot be to speak for yourself, the Holy Ghost is before the Father right now and he's speaking for you. Is there anybody this morning that knows that the Holy Ghost uh, is speaking for your blessing in this service already before God? And he's saying, yes, I know he missed it and messed up, but that blessing will not pass him by this morning. That grace will not elude him this morning. That basket of blessing that is filled up, that his name is written upon, it will not be given to another. Why? And he begins to advocate before the Father. Have you not said in your word that you would have mercy on whom you have mercy? You would have compassion on whom you have compassion. And no matter the railing accusation of the devil brought before the Father, the Bible says mercy rejoices over judgment. Mercy rejoices over judgment. Even when God is so angry and the Lord is saying yes. And so when the devil is building up the case and is building up the case, and his calls are rising in support. And some of the angels are even jittery already. Ah, this matter, <laughs> there is no end in sight. This one is going for the, for the judgment. This one is going for the heavy armor on the head. Jesus is there. The Holy Ghost is there. And they are taking their time. And by the time they say, have you not said in your word, all the wrath of God. Don't think God does not have wrath. <laughs> The Bible says the wrath of God was completed. It was finished. God was angry with man. But everything was done away with in Christ. And no matter how angry he was, or the enemy may want to stay him to be angry with you, God says, I cannot be wrought with him anymore. I can't be angry anymore. Why? Because I don't see him anymore. I see my son. I see Jesus. Oh, no wonder he says in Hebrews. He said, even though we do not see all things being placed under the feet of man. He said, but we see Jesus. And as long or so long as he sees Jesus, every accusation is done away with. I don't care what anybody has said about you or is saying about you. 
because there are adversaries and accusers in the flesh. The devil has also empowered men with the ministry of accusation. They paint your picture to you and you feel so less of yourself. You don't even want to come to church anymore. But God comes to you in the presence of the Spirit and says there is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. Those who do not walk after the flesh, they don't walk in the counsels of the flesh. In the flesh, his judgment may read death condemnation but they walk by the law there is a superior law of the spirit it's called the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus he set us free from the law of sin and death and that's what god does in the person of the holy ghost he intercedes on behalf of the people and he does not just stand there looking when all things go wrong. Many times, you know, we have that feeling that, God, can't you see that everything is going upside down for me? And you're not saying anything. He's there, he knows. He knows. He's called to strengthen and to encourage. He's called to strengthen and to encourage. The Paracletos, the Holy Ghost, is called to strengthen and to encourage. You see that even in the ministry of Jesus when he was so discouraged. And he didn't want to go to the cross anymore and he prayed. And he was ministered to by the angels. They strengthened him. And you see Paul said, God, when God came for him and stood by him, he strengthened him and delivered him from the mouth of the lions. The ministry of the Spirit is to the end that you are strengthened and encouraged all the time. And so when Jesus was speaking to the disciples, he said, I am going to send you another helper. He called him another because it will be different in kind. His ministry will be the same like my ministry. Get it right. Everything that I represented while I was here, this man or this spirit will come and do exactly the same thing that I did when I was with you. But it's coming in another form, another kind. That's why I called him another helper. Meaning I am the first helper that you have come to know in the flesh. You have known me as your sustainer, your helper in the flesh. But this will not come to you in the flesh. He is the spirit of God and I'm sending him to you and I call him another because he's another kind. But his ministry is the same. And who is the helper that they already knew that they could relate to? Because when Jesus was speaking to them and saying to them, I will send you another helper. I'm sure Peter, what he was thinking in his brain is, okay, so you're going to send somebody else that will pay our bills. Someone else that will send our children to school. Someone else that will pay our taxes. Someone else that will fight for us. Someone else that in the midst of the storms will rise again and say, peace, be still. Someone else that will raise our dead. Someone else that will make my mother-in-law, when she falls ill again, she's going to be raised because you are sending someone else. And Jesus said, yes, you are grasping what I'm saying. I have been that help to you, but I'm sending another in another form to you. And for you to understand the ministry of the Holy Ghost in full, or, to have, or not to have a lopsided understanding of the ministry of the Spirit, it will take you to understand the ministry of Jesus. Just like I explained, because the disciples, disciples could relate with the ministry of Jesus. And so for us in these days, we didn't know Jesus in the flesh, or we don't know him in the flesh. And for us to fully understand the ministry of the Holy Ghost that we have now, Jesus represented in the form of his spirit, then we need to fully grasp the ministry of Jesus. This morning, I'm just going to look at one of the ministries of Jesus. So that you can understand what the Holy Ghost is also doing in your life or the ministry that he has been called to fulfill in your life because it, Jesus is the best person that can introduce the ministry of the spirit to any man if you read his life that's Jesus and understand his ministry then you can fully understand the ministry of the Holy Ghost can we go to the book of Luke chapter 22 it's a simple word this morning and I'll be rounding up very very shortly How did Jesus as the helper operate when he was on earth? So that we can understand how the Holy Ghost is also operating in our days. Luke 22 from verse 31 to 32. Luke chapter 22 and verse 31 to 32. We want to understand how Jesus as an helper or as a helper helps or helped in those times. Jesus as a paracletos how he operated because he was the first helper 
Let me read verse 31. And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. There is a translation that says, I'm not sure if it's the NLT or the NIV now. Peter, Peter, the devil has asked for you. <laughs> he has asked for you that he may sift you as wheat. Jesus said, he's not about to do it. He has already done it. He has come to the Father with accusations and he has looked at everybody within the camp and said, Peter, it is you that I want. Not even Judas. Peter has been asked for by Satan. I wonder how you will feel all of a sudden if you have a dream into this morning Sunday service and then you hear your name, hear me, hear me. Jesus now appearing to you in your dream and you are sure it's Jesus, not an angel. But you had a vision. And says, hear me, hear me. Satan has asked for you. I'm sure many of us would find a way of waking up from that dream very swiftly. And as soon as that dream is over, pastor's phone will not stop ringing. You know, till this service, I'm sure pastor may not even be seated here now. Maybe he will be in the office because you would want him to pray for you. How can Satan, out of everybody, be asking for me? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> so many people in church, why did they ask for Pastor Tosi? <laughs> why why me and jesus said it to peter satan has asked for you specifically he wants to sift you like wheat you know in those days when you look when wheat is to be produced <laughs> you get the wheat you harvest it from the farm you put it on the on the ground and you pound it <laughs> you pound it so hard that the shaft will be separated from the wheat. And then the shaft will not bl be blown away. You pick both the shaft and the wheat and you put them together and you begin to sift them. You begin to shake them so vigorously that the wind may blow away the shaft and that the wheat may remain. And Jesus was trying to describe what the devil wants to do to Peter in that wise. Peter, the devil wants to pound you hard. <laughs> he wants to pound your... How many people sometimes feel pounded? I can see hands. I just asked rhetorically, but I can see hands already. How many people sometimes feel really pounded by Satan? And like, is it that the attention of hell has been relocated or has been called upon my life? And then let's share this problem equally. Let it go around the entire family. I think my own body needs that. Why, 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 why me? Why is this pounding so hard? He said, and after the pounding, after you have survived the pounding, he still comes in and begins to shake you and shake you so vigorously that some part of your life, your finance, your health, your job, and you lose certain aspects of you. And you say, Lord, why? And you would wonder why Jesus would not stop Satan from, <laughs> from, from doing what he proposed to do. Jesus didn't say to Peter in that Luke chapter 22 that Peter, that Satan has asked for you but I've stopped him. I've stopped him from asking. He won't ask, he won't, no, he won't come back to me to ask for you anymore. No, no. It won't stop him from asking. No. Sometimes that's what we do. And we are saying, Lord, but why would you not stop him? For many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said the Lord delivers him from them all. But why would the righteous go through affliction in the first place? Lord, why? 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 Jesus wouldn't stop Satan. And why he will not stop Satan is that there is something about your life, Katabayada, that will bring glory. There is something about you that will not shine until it has gone through fire. Job says, he knows the way that I take. That after that he has tried me, I will come forth as gold. There will be no shining without the beating, without, you know, gold being thrown in that fire. And the temperature being raised to a point where it becomes so unbearable. And you're wondering, why is this fire so hot? Why will the four or the three Hebrew children now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, be allowed to even go into the fire in the first place? God, why? They will not bow. Just strike Nebuchadnezzar dead. And that decree is over. It's done. Just, sometimes we just want God to do some miraculous things. He said, why would the ministry, how would the ministry of the helper be made prominent if I stop all these trials? 
How will the ministry of the Holy Ghost be real to you if you don't go through anything at all? If there are no trials, if there are no challenges, it will not shine and it wants to shine in your life. He wants to show to the world that he is God all by himself. But that will not happen by an announcement from heaven. And the heavens open and say, oh, I am God in his life and that's it. And that, no, there will be some beating. And that's why God is always waiting for Satan to come and ask for you. <laughs> yeah, he would ask. He's asking. And he would continue to ask for you. But one thing you can be very sure of is this. That no matter how much he desires you to have you, no matter the level of shaking, there is one that stands with you in the trial. There is a, the, an advocate who doesn't need to necessarily, I mean, who doesn't necessarily need to stop the case from going to court. You say, God, but why would I have to be charged to court? You could have stopped this matter before they charged me to court. You could have made a way before Lazarus didn't need to die. Just heal him and that's fine. Why did he have to die? He said, no, let's go to the court of hell. Let's go to the court of death. Let me show that I am the resurrection. I am the life. And Mary said, no, I know you will be the resurrection and the life. My brother will rise on the last day. He said, no. I said, today, today, today. I am. Not I will be. I am the resurrection. I am the life. I won't stop the case from going to court. Let it get to court. I want to show my glory, my power. I want to show my ability to defend my own. I want to show my strength eh, that is being made perfect in your weakness. That even though you cannot speak for yourself, I will speak for you. Let's go to court. Let's go to court. That's what the Holy Ghost rejoices in doing. He is rejoicing when you are going through trials. I wish God can open your eyes. And when you're going through the things you're going through, you can see how heaven is rejoicing over your life. Because there's absolutely something great and beautiful that is coming out of your life. And the heavens cannot wait for the trial to be over. You know what they are doing? They are just open and trusting that you will not give up. That you can stay with them in the midst of the fire. That you will not bow to them. And say, oh God, please, I will bow. I don't need that fire. They are just waiting and praying. Lord, grant him that patience and endurance to go through the fire. Even when they come and they tie their hands. And they said, we, have, we are eating the fire seven times more. And they could have easily said, we are not doing anymore. He said, no. And they are just trusting. Everyone is just hoping that they won't give up at the point of the challenge. And as soon as they saw them being carried into the fire, there was joy in heaven. <laughs> as soon as they saw them being thrown, because they know the end, the fourth man will appear. Kadaba. The fourth man who speaks for his own in court, the Holy Ghost. The Bukhanesa said, didn't we throw three people in the fire? Who is this last person? I'm seeing something. I'm seeing something that we didn't put in there, but it's, I see men walking through fire unbound. They were bound, but they got in there and their chains were loosened. Kadabayanta. In this month of February, don't ask God to stop that trouble. There is something that is working. He said, for a light affliction, which is but for a moment. There is something that is working in your life. There is a glory. That is working. He said, For I reckon that the sufferings of these times are not worthy to be compared with the glory. If there is anything the Holy Ghost and I pray for you this morning, is that He will give you the patience and the endurance to go through all that you are going through. Because in the end, you are coming forth as gold. That's all that He's asking from you this morning. Just stay with me. Stay with me in court. I'm with you. He's there and he told Peter, I have prayed for you. <laughs> Chai, what an assurance. Yes, he asked for you. I'm rounding up shortly now. He said, but I have prayed for you. That no matter what the enemy does, it will not succeed. Let them gather themselves together. Let them photocopy themselves together. Let them multiply. Let the hostilities increase. Let the troubles and the waters rage like the raging of the sea. He said, they will not defeat you. Why? Because I have also asked for you. 
as the devil satan asked for you i have also asked for you of my father as he has plans for you i also have the plans of good and not of evil to give you a future and a hope an expected end so let him be asking for your life i'm also asking for your life and it's only one person the father will hear it is me he will hear satan <laughs> It is me. He would only hear my voice. He wouldn't hear the voice of the accuser. He said, for they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the words of their testimony. It's my voice. And so he's saying to you this morning, it would defeat Satan's agenda concerning your life. He said to Peter, the intention of Satan will not succeed. It will come with fire, with water, with tribulation. But none of these things will work. <laughs> None of these things would work. No weapon formed would work. Satan has got a plan. I also have my plan. Isaiah 43 and verse 1 and 2. He said, for when you go through the water. He didn't say if you go through the water. When you go through fires. He didn't say if you go through fires. Because it will surely happen. The rain, the wind, the storms will come. It will beat upon the house. It's not if the rain. He said when the rain. It will come. It will come. And what, what a better way for us to exemplify or to show forth the ministry of the Holy Ghost other than in the midst of trials. What a year that the Holy Ghost is set to reveal himself. But I'm saying to you, church, that, that revelation will be more glorious, particularly in trials, in tests, in some issues, in some, oh God, why this worry? Why this happening? God is saying to you, rejoice in battle. You know, they call some people arrogant in Yoruba. It is when they see battle that they rejoice. In adversity, they are happy because they know. <laughs> they would rather have the crown delivered to them after battle. They don't want to just receive crown and just go. But my God is one. The Bible says, and the great white horse appeared in heaven. And the one that sat upon him was given a bow and a crown. And he went on conquering and to conquer. He was given two things. He was given the reward eh, of the overcomer. But he was also given the, the, the weapon of the overcomer. He was given a bow. Go and fight. Even even though your victory is ascertained, is ascertained, you still need to fight. And it says lastly to Peter, when you are strengthened, and I love that word when. It is a if there is an assurance, Peter. When you are strengthened, I mean when you return, sorry, strengthen your brethren. When you return, strengthen your brethren that word when means that it will surely happen he said for the vision is for an appointed time at the end it will speak he said though it tarry wait for it it will surely come it will not tarry and i read i said lord you said it will tarry and you said i should wait for it surely but it will not tarry what exactly are you trying to say you are bringing to my assurance this morning that it may look so long in the eyes of man according to the chronos of men but when my kairos comes into chronos uh, you realize that all the years that the locust uh, and the canker worms uh, have eaten up uh, i am able to restore in sevenfold and that's why it will look like nothing was missing in the first place. That's why it will look like nothing was broken in the first place. You may have lost a child. God is saying, I can bring many more that will make you forget your pain. You have lost contract. I can bring many more that will make you forget the loss of yesterday. Is there anybody who has lost something here? And you are still living in, in regret of the things you lost. The Holy Ghost is saying to you in this month of February, I'm going to do something to you that will make you forget all your pains. That will make you forget all your struggles. All your losses eh? for I am able to restore I'm able to restore he said when you return there's an assurance that you return. Ah, uh, the ransom of the Lord shall return to Zion. <laughs> Isaiah 35 and verse 10. I say you will come back at the end of the month uh, and you present yourself to this house, to this church as gold. Uh, you present uh, your trophy in this house, uh, your testimonies as your trophy. The Holy Ghost with you will make you return uh, with your trophy, your sheaves in your hands. Uh, they may go weeping in the night, uh, sowing their seed, uh, going through trials. Uh, it's a undoubtedly they will return undoubtedly they will come back to Zion with singing everlasting songs shall be upon their head they will obtain joy and gladness sorrow and sighing shall flee away they will flee completely forever 
when you return Peter strengthen your brethren that means that when you return you went in weak you are coming back strong because Peter was weak that's when he went that's why he went down he said but when you return you won't come back at the same Peter anymore you are coming back as a stronger Peter one that has been infused with strength and that's what God is saying to somebody as you return you will bring many sons unto glory you will bring many generations to glory many people will thank God because of your life can we bow our heads this morning and just give God all the praise can we thank him for the ministry of the Holy Ghost another helper the paracletos that has been sent to us give him praise for his ministry over your life Oh, Father, we give you all the glory. Let's magnify him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kiva sota yo pradikos kalarodos tes kundalero se pradiza. Father, we give you all the glory. We we'll worship you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed? I'm hearing in my spirit. That we should take advantage of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives this morning. Are you ready to take advantage of it? Ask anybody, say, are you ready? <laughs> We've had something so great this morning. Very awesome. Pastor, may God bless you. I was so blessed. The Spirit of God was all over my body, all through that message. It was so strong. I was so blessed. Now I must let you know this, ladies and gentlemen, that what we've had this morning is a message that does not put responsibility on the Holy Spirit, but puts responsibility on you. Come on, turn to somebody. Say, it puts responsibility on me. You know, if you look at what you've had this morning, there is a part of it that shows the Holy Spirit will do this for you. Am I right? The Holy Spirit will do this for you. It is true. It does it. But you know what? If you know how he does it, you will know the real responsibility is on you. It's not on him. I don't know if you get what I'm talking about. So I'll just briefly talk on the responsibility part so that it's not just good to know the word. It's good to know the what? The how. So that I can be able to function in it. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, um, oh, thank you, Holy Spirit of God. I pray I'll be able to finish in a few minutes. In John chapter number 14, the main contest scripture, John 14, verse number 16, the Bible says, And now pray the Father, and he will send you another helper like unto me. And the scripture that he was opening up, another helper. Now, he started with helper, Paracletos. Paracletos means helper. It means comforter. It means advocate. And of course, in the place of advocate, we had a lot of admonition this morning. Now, this is the word I want to bring to you. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. But you know what? He does not advocate outside you. To carry the Holy Spirit is not sufficient. Ladies and gentlemen, when you understand how it works, you will know it doesn't do it without you. Now, let me tell you how he advocates for you, how he speaks to the Father for you. Romans chapter number 8 and verse number 26, verse 27 and verse 28. Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities, for we know not how to pray as old, but the Spirit maketh intercessions for us with groanings they cannot be uttered. And he that searches the heart, no other man or the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. And these we know, all things work together for good for those that love God. That are the called according to his purpose. Now please understand this. The Bible says, and these we know, all things work together. That means the results will change. <laughs> if the spirit can step in. If the advocacy of the spirit, ladies and gentlemen, can be engaged in the matter. Am I talking to somebody here? And how does the spirit advocate? Likewise, the Spirit helps our infirmities. For we know not how to pray as well. That means our prayers may always miss it. Abraham was interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah, for God not to destroy it. And he was saying, if you meet 50 righteous people there, 40, 45, 
35, 30, 10, 20. At the end of the day, when he said 10, he left. I mean, he stopped speaking, and of course, God walked away. But you see, there was only one righteous man there. Peter said, when God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, God delivered the righteous Lord. Can you remember? He could have started with one instead of 50. You see, it shows you the range of ignorance in him because we don't know how to pray at all. You can be ignorant of what you are praying. But the Spirit has all the knowledge. Am I talking to somebody here? Now, you see, <laughs> I was somewhere one day and a prophet was talking to a pregnant woman. He said, how are you? He said, Pastor C was there with me. He said, hey, I can see that you are pregnant for seven months, seven hours, uh, uh, 33 minutes, 28 seconds. Ah, I said, ah, and this man was talking with accuracy. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I you know one thing somebody just said to me, he said, that is how much the Holy Ghost knows about the details of your life. <laughs> so if when you are ignorant, he's not ignorant. He can tell you the microseconds that the thing happened. Ah, he has all the details. Somebody help appreciate the Holy Ghost in the house. Yeah. <laughs> is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So you see, ladies and gentlemen, what are we saying? The Bible says, likewise, the spirit helps our infirmities, for we don't know how to pray at all. But he maketh intercessions for us. How does he make intercessions for you? That's the problem. Many believers think that the Holy Ghost is just praying for them. Just like Jesus prayed for Peter. No, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> the Holy Spirit does not pray for you outside you. When you, when you see that, likewise, the spirit helps our infirmities. Infirmity means weakness. The dictionary meaning means weakness, inability to produce the right result. That's the dictionary meaning. Now, you see, your my own prayer can't produce it without him. But the spirit maker intercession, as our translation says, the spirit prays for us. Intercession is just the prayer you pray for somebody else. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? The spirit prays for us. How does the spirit pray? In 1 Corinthians chapter number 14 and verse 14. The Bible says, when I speak in tongues, my spirit, as enabled by the Holy Ghost, amplify Bible. My spirit prays, as enabled by the Holy Spirit. He said, when I speak in tongues, the, my spirit prayed. And what? My mind has no part in it. Now you see, when he says, as enabled by the Holy Ghost, he's saying, he's saying the real thing. Because it is the Holy Spirit that enables your spirit to make that prayer. That is where the Holy Ghost prays for you. That is how the Holy Ghost, in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost came down on them, verse number 4, the Bible said, and they spake in tongues as the Spirit, the spirit granted them enablement. Another translation says, as the Spirit engraced them. Another one says, as the Spirit enabled them. Another one says, as the Spirit gave them utterance. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So, speaking in tongues is a function of your human spirit as enabled, empowered by the Holy Spirit. Now, when I speak in tongues, that is how the Spirit prays. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So the Holy Ghost is not praying for you outside you. It is still a personal responsibility of you that you cannot dodge. Do you understand? Every greatness by reason of the intercession of the Spirit ever accruing to any man's side, ladies and gentlemen, is a function of him rising with a sense of responsibility to take up his prayer life. Do you get what I'm talking about? So, <laughs> we shouldn't be looking at, oh, Jesus is praying for me, or I mean, the Holy Ghost is praying for me, I don't need to pray. Just like, maybe probably, the likes of Peter and the rest, you know, in those days, they may, were not fasting, they asked Jesus, hey, your disciples are not fasting. They are not, Jesus said, as far as the bridegroom is with them. I mean, I mean, do you understand what I'm talking about? Uh, they don't need to fast. But when I go, they will understand. It's me being the covering now over them. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Even Jesus himself that was their covering. You remember, Jesus came to model what the Holy Ghost can do in the life of a human being to us. That Jesus needed to pray so that the Holy Ghost in him can pray. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. So ladies and gentlemen, how do you want the Holy Spirit in you to pray when you are not praying? Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So he's my advocate, yes. But his advocacy is linked to my prayer life. Oh, I don't know what I'm talking to somebody here. Does somebody catch what I'm talking about? So we have a place of personal responsibility for the spirit to occupy a particular office in our lives. Now let me run up by letting you know this. When you pray in the spirit, don't leave it there. 
<laughs> you see, many believers don't understand that when Jesus came, he didn't make us a, 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 a ability, I mean, he didn't give us a special ability just to talk to God alone. No. Ladies and gentlemen, he also made us something. <laughs> that means to exercise power and authority as well after we've talked to God. Now, you see, let me, let me explain this to you. Pastor Tommy was sharing that scripture that Jesus carried the crown and the bow. You see, there are two major power status that you command after redemption. Number one is your priesthood. And number two, ladies and gentlemen, is your kinship. The two are combined in the saint. The Bible said in Revelation chapter 1 and verses 5 and 6, that Christ Jesus has made us kings and priests. And in Revelation chapter number 10, verse, verse 10, uh, sorry, chapter 5, verse 10, the Bible says Christ Jesus has made us kings and priests to reign on the earth. So he made us the two. The two are combining us. And that's why 1 Peter chapter number 2, verse number 9. The Bible says you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Can you see? A royal priesthood. Kingship and priesthood combined. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So when Jesus redeemed you, he gave you a priesthood and he gave you a kingship. Now what is priesthood? Priesthood is the capacity, an office that enables you to stand in the gap to talk to God on behalf of the people. Do you understand? So priesthood is a ministry of intercessions which we do by the Spirit now. That means we are talking to God by the Spirit. Priests in those days are ministers on behalf of the people towards God. They are always talking to In those days we always have priests and prophets. You know that. Now, the priest is the mouth of the people towards God. The prophet is the mouth of God to the people. Do you understand what I'm talking about? So priests basically intercede. They're always making sacrifice on behalf of the people. Or uh, bye -bye, daddy, you want, uh, going to the holies of holies, carrying the blood, carrying the sacrifices. Do you understand? Just talking to God on behalf of the people. He, are you getting what I'm talking about? Now, so after you have prayed in the Holy Ghost, <laughs> after you have charged in the Holy Ghost, after your priesthood responsibility, our priestly responsibility rather, has been amply discharged, ladies and gentlemen, it is so sad to know that many believers leave it there. No, you don't leave it there. You now go as a king. <laughs> what does it mean to function as a king? A king is one who speaks in the authority of power. <laughs> who speaks, ladies and gentlemen, with audacity over, over a matter. The Bible says we are there, wherever there is the word of a king, there is what? There is power. So what makes a king a king is power. You see, the Nigerian kingship now does not make people understand the biblical kingship. I'm telling you, it has paralyzed the mentality and the conception. <laughs> because the KBSC now is very questionable in Nigeria. I don't know if you... <coughs> KBS, have you not seen kings are removed? Danzuki was fired out of office. One book passed away well with immediate effect. Later on, the, the military... Abacha came to a meeting. Dansuki, every you know the president was always coming last. The head of state in those days. So, so everybody stood up to welcome Abacha. Dansuki was sitting down. Abacha didn't say anything. You see, you don't fight when you know you carry power. <laughs> he allowed the military to go. He just called the military governor of Sokoto, and we yeah, are removing with immediate effect. And you know, kinship is under the state governor. Um, is under state uh, matters. You see, the next thing they just called Dansuki to the office next day. And they gave him a letter. They didn't allow him to open it. He said, go out with the other door, sir. I'm telling you, he collected it by himself. He didn't collect it by any whatever. They didn't courier it. As he went out, he understood the meaning. The other door not shown. Straight to Kaduna. <laughs> okay, is it Castina or wherever? Do you understand what I'm talking about? He just left. Dansuki was such an authority that when he was passing, everybody would bow like this on the road. Do you understand what I'm talking about? But you see, no matter how great they are, there are no KBC in Nigeria anymore. It's only the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords that is KBC in heaven and on heart, and we join him in him. Glory be to God in the highest. So if somebody catch what I'm talking about, whatever he does is unquestionable. That is what it means. Now listen, that means you are a king. Is what carry power. Your words carry power. Many believers, after you have prayed, you don't take time to decree. That's where I'm going. You don't take time now to speak boldly. You don't take time, ladies and gentlemen, to say some great things about your life. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? Do I have some few minutes more? <laughs> okay. So what God is showing us this morning is that after you have taken time to pray in the Holy Spirit, 
it may still not happen. Because there is so much of power now that is all the abilities of God. When you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit intercedes to God. Yes, what God does is to strengthen you with grace, strengthen you with ability. But now you are the one to give direction to the ability. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Can I again at the Kenegan's camp meeting? It was, you will see, that's the reason why some people are here. Now you've been praying to God. Uh, but Father, I've been praying for the past 10 years on this matter. God is good, as the Spirit of God is telling me right now. He said he's giving that person an answer right now. <laughs> and the Lord said, there's somebody here, you have a contention over a matter. He said it will hold hand in your favor. <laughs> now listen, I, I will say something. Can I get smitten? Two angels came in. One flew back through the right hand. The other one flew through the, hand, the left hand. And Can I was looking at them. And one angel said to the other, said, what shall we do? He said, whatever they tell us to do. Whatever they decree. Those are the things. So if they decree nothing, that means the angels have nothing to do. Do you know what I'm talking about? It didn't just make you a priest. Why do you allow all your responsibility to end up in the first phase? You also have a kingly responsibility to read your words with power. And whatsoever you say, we come to pass. You see, there is a place of God speaking. God telling me, Femi, this is what it's going to be. And I say, oh, oh, there's somebody here, or I'm ministering. And I begin to tell you your whole life. Yes, I see that. Do you understand? That is when a prophetic gadget comes on me. And then, of course, you begin to move. But you see, a lot of times, it is not a prophetic gadget. I'm telling you, I'm, you know, everybody's growing in the spirit. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I grow so much in this other aspect right now. I speak with authority as a king. And what I say comes to pass. Regardless of the number of years or I mean how unchangeable that situation is. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Because there is power with you. All you need is when you pray in tongues, you stir up the power. Let me run up by telling you this. The Bible said in John chapter number 14, that John 14 uh, part that Pastor me was um, good, is a blessed chapter. Come on, tell somebody is a blessed chapter. Uh, verse 10 the Lord said there's somebody here your book of cavity your mouth, your teeth you have an issue you are being healed right now thank you Holy Spirit of God now are you catching what I'm talking about now um, what was I saying John 14 verse number 10 the Bible said Jesus said believers down me believers not down me that I am in the Father and the Father in what? He me, the words that I speak, can you say it? The words that I speak, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ah, the Father that dwelleth in me doeth the works. Can you say it? Now I wanted to see something here. This is so clear. He said, "Believers, not on me that I am in the Father." Now the first thing that you would think of is that the Father in heaven. Yes, let's even agree in the Father in heaven. But the Father in heaven is in him. You will agree with me that it is not the Father that is in heaven that came down to come and stay in him. Do you understand? It's the Holy Spirit that is where? That is in him. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? Remember he came to model how our life should be. Now he said, I will give you that spirit and it will abide with you forever. To live in you. So it's the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit came, Luke chapter 3, and descended on Jesus and came inside of him. So the Father took residence in him in person of the Holy Ghost. Pastor, me asked us a question. Who is the Holy Spirit? Many say my director. Some say my mentor. You know what? <laughs> I was expecting one answer. He's my Father. Jesus, when he was on heart, the Holy Ghost was his Father. That's the truth. Remember in Philippians chapter 2, verse 7, the Bible says when he came on heart, he left every privilege of being God. He left it in heaven. Every deity was taken off from the life of Jesus when he came on earth. He came as ordinary man. He, the divinity came on him when the Holy Spirit came on him. That's when he became Jesus Christ. The anointed one. Do you understand what I'm talking about? He left every privilege of being God. You know, when he was in heaven. Some translations say Philippians 2.7. Um, Are you catching on? The Bible said he did not count the robbery to be equal with God. But he took upon himself the form of a man. Do you understand what I'm talking about? The form of a servant. You see, what are we just trying to say, ladies and gentlemen? It was the Holy Ghost. Until the Holy Ghost came, miracles didn't start in his life. There was no divinity. They said, you know, the capital son that we knew. Nothing special about him. His father died. He could not raise his father. Joseph died, according to Bible tradition, before Jesus started ministry. Jesus couldn't raise him up. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Several people died in his street. He couldn't raise him up. But when the Holy Ghost came on him, the Bible says he went to marriage in Canada of Galilee. This was his first miracle. 
I don't know who I'm speaking to you. Something is starting this week in your life. The Lord said I should prophesy on people here. A dimension you have never entered before. It is starting in your life this week. If you believe you are the one I'm speaking to, this is going to be the great beginning of the mighty beginnings in your life. Uh, lift up all hands and receive it with the loudest. Amen. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So the Holy Spirit fathered Jesus related with him as his what? As his father. As his father. When you hear Pastor Debo say thank you daddy, he's not talking about daddy in heaven. He's talking about the Holy Spirit. Do you understand? Because God had to tell him, say, sit down and know the Holy Ghost. But I said that was when the explosion started in his life. Do you understand? Because every word he's hearing is not from heaven. You know, he's from his father in him. The, the father in him is the one who receives it from heaven. I don't know if you understand what I'm talking about. You see, Jesus said in John chapter 16, verse 13, And when he, the spirit of truth, shall come, he shall guide you into every truth. He shall not speak of himself, but that which he receives of me, shall he speak what? Unto you. So every voice you hear is the voice of the Holy Ghost. Do you understand me? Except under the Lordship of the Spirit, the Lord permits an angel to speak to you. He is the one that speaks to you. Is somebody catch what I'm talking about? So when you say, oh, that, that is telling me something. It's the Holy Ghost that is telling you. Is somebody, so he's your father. He conveys the fatherhood of God to you. Do you understand? I ran up with this. Mark chapter number 16, the Bible says from verse 19. Mark chapter 16 from verse 19. The Bible says, and after Jesus has said these things unto them, he ascended up to heaven. Mark 16 verse 19. He ascended up to heaven. And the Bible said he, he sat down at the right hand of the Father of God. Now, that means from that scripture, God is in heaven. Am I right? Oh, come on, am I talking to God's people here? God is in heaven. And then Jesus sat, and, Jesus sat at the right hand of, uh, of God. So where is God? Where is Jesus? Now, verse 20, and the apostles went forth. <laughs> and the Lord walking with them, they went for preaching. And the Lord walking with them, confirming the words with signs and wonders following. Then the question is, who is now the Lord walking with them? Because God now is in heaven, Jesus is in heaven. Who is the Lord walking with them here on earth? It's the Holy Ghost. That's why the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter number 3 and uh, verse 17, now the Lord is that spirit. He's not the Lord that walks with us. So every walking in your life now of divinity is that spirit. Now one major thing as I round up that the spirit has brought to you eh, is divinity. Just as Jesus came with that divinity and the Holy Ghost brought divinity to him. It's the same way the Holy Ghost has brought divinity to you. Now when he comes, he becomes the same with your spirit, your human spirit. The Bible says, you know, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23, that the Lord may sanctify you, spirit, soul, and body. So we are three part beings. We have a spirit. Now, when the Holy Ghost comes, it comes to tabernacle inside your spirit. And it becomes one with that spirit. That means they are not two. Just like when you say somebody is married, the Bible says in, 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 in Genesis 2, 24, in Matthew 19, verse 6, the Bible says, and the two shall become one flesh, right? When they are married. Now it's the same thing. When you're married, it is one flesh. It's not one spirit. Don't let anybody deceive you. If somebody is married to a Muslim and you are not believing uh, um, this, or you are married to one unbeliever, and you are, if it is done, it is done. Do you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Do you understand what I'm talking about? I don't know who I'm speaking to here. God is speaking to somebody. You are not believing, you know, off, off the whatever, against the person. I've seen a preacher preach that because of that, you cannot be one spirit with the person. I said you are right, but the Bible never said marriage brings you into one spirit. The preacher was preaching on TV and I was tearing him down. I said, what marriage, the best marriage can do is to make you one flesh. What's not clear there? I'm not preaching from any other book. I'm preaching for the Bible now. If you need more scripture, I can supply you more. But because of time, let's go. <laughs> if somebody catch what I'm talking about. So the Bible said, in marriage you become one flesh, but in things of the spirit, you become one spirit with God. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17, the Bible says, He that is joined to the Lord is what? Is one spirit with him. So you are no longer two, but what? One spirit. So the Holy Ghost comes to become one with your spirit. That's why when God was speaking to Moses in Numbers 11, verse 17, if you go through uh, uh, Dawa Reigns trans, uh, translation, that is uh, D-O-U-A-Y, then Reigns translation. 
You see, he, he, he said there that God said, and I will take of thy spirit, talking to Moses, and I will put it on the 70 years. Why can you take of Moses' spirit? Moses' spirit, and the spirit came on 70 years and they started prophesying. Moses' spirit can't make anybody prophesy now. But what God is saying is this, God's spirit has become Moses' spirit. And Moses' spirit has become God's spirit. It becomes one. When I say by the Geshe stand, Sister Sammy has the right to stand. Pastor Tosin has the right to stand. Because they have become what? One. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? So when God said, I will take off thy spirit, Moses. And the spirit came on and started prophesying. It takes the Holy Ghost to prophesy. In Joel 2, 28. I will pour out my spirit upon our flesh. And your sons and daughters shall what? Shall prophesy. So it takes the Holy Ghost to prophesy God's spirit. But when it comes in you, it becomes one with you. So God's spirit is not your spirit. Your spirit is not God's spirit. Now what do I need to do then? All I need now is to pray in tongues to amplify the ministry of that. To stir up. Because that spirit needs to be stirred. When you stir it up, ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't end there. That's where we are going and that's the conclusion. Many of us ended there. You don't end there. Ladies and gentlemen, you now rise after you are charged. Ay, ay, ay. Hey, hey. You now move straight into your kingly ministry. That's in the name of Jesus. Abacha, you are dead now. I'm telling you, you will die. In the name of Jesus, this money I've been expecting, you come today, not tomorrow. I'm telling you the truth by the power of the Spirit, it comes to pass like that. Is somebody catching what I'm talking about? You begin to function that way. I was talking to Pastor Ebon. You know, we were talking, uh, was it last week? And he, he was working as a contractor somewhere. And I was going home one night. And he said, Pastor, please. He had some testimony. He said, please, I also want to be made permanent. I said, you, are, you don't want to be permanent. I said, if you want to be permanent, you know what to do. Go now and decree that today they confirm me. He said, God told me. He prayed. He charged very well. He got to his place of work. He said, today they confirm me. That same day, no plan of confirmation before. One officer just talked to another officer and talked to him and this. And they said the person to do it was not around. Do you know what? All of them called themselves and they confirmed them that same day. As a foot. Do you understand? He was telling me last week, he said, he will never forget that in his life. So I said, and he has been working for years there. I said, you can, you can be a contract worker for you can be expecting a contract or expecting a breakthrough for donkey years and never get a breakthrough. Do you understand? Because you refuse to exercise. And he's praying, you know, he had always been praying. But he does not know of the kingly ministry, the kingly part. Ladies and gentlemen, you pray to God as a priest. You decree as a king. <laughs> is somebody catch what I'm talking about? After you have talked to God, ladies and gentlemen, don't hand it there. <laughs> take some five minutes, take some ten minutes to now address situations. After Jesus has finished praying, he said, Father, thank you, you have heard me. That means how to pray. At the tomb of Lazarus, John chapter 11, verses 40 and 41. And he now looked at Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth! Not decree as a king. That is it. Where there is the work of a king, there is what? Abba. The Bible says, and he that was dead came out. I don't know who I'm speaking to here. Your Lazarus will come forth now. You know, as, I, as Pastor Tommy was preaching, I just remember something. I was sharing some money yesterday night, right? You know what happened about that money? A lady came to see me last week. The lady said, I've been on the same level for years. And there's no hope of anything. He said, the performance is bad, sir. I said, what? He said, the, he said, the people on that house have been promoted above her. And I looked at her. And he said, if only I'm promoted, sir, I will be so blessed. He said, because for my promotion, the way... The organization work. They will firstly pay her um, so, 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 so amount, several millions and all that. Okay. And I looked at her. I said, but I can give you the promotion regardless of your performance. If you want it now. I said, I want it. I said, come. Look at her. Lay hands on her. Das! I said, by next week, you will get this thing. I said, you can go now. I said, I said you, you, you have your promotion. She looked at me like this. Ah, he said, I will be glad though. You know one thing? Some people will not tell you. say, Pastor, to my village, I will send something. That means they don't believe. Not that they don't have the thing. That, do you understand what I'm talking about? I, don't, I just look at her. I said, don't worry. It's not going to happen by your own feet. But mine, you will see what happened next week. You know what? This last week, she now came on Friday. On Friday. Now, you would think, ah, but Pastor, Monday she called me. Tuesday she called me. Wednesday. I kept quiet. <laughs> on Friday, she said, I woke up this morning, and they sent me my letter of promotion. He said, and, and they didn't just send me. They sent me with all the money. He said, Pastor, I got this for you. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm talking about? 
I, I, a guy called me on Friday as well. You know, he's been looking for American loan. You know, America gives loans. He's a company in America. So he's into building. And then, you know, they, they apply for loans in millions of dollars. Since COVID started, they've been giving them loans. So he said, I've applied for two years and I could not get. And he called me last week. I said, when do you want it? I said, do I give you and then you get it by next week? He said, yes. And then I prayed with him. I said, by next week, they will give you the loan. Now, not that God told me. After I finish praying, I have to decree as a king. Do you understand? And next week, that next week was last, was last week. I, I, when I saw his call coming in, I was just too sure. I said, this guy is calling me to tell me that he's paid. That is what? He's paid. And ladies and gentlemen, the guy called. <laughs> and I said, what is happening? He said, I just want to tell you, sir, that I woke up this Friday morning and they sent me a letter, American government sent me a letter that the loan has been approved. I will pay the loan back in 30 years. I, and, I, and I said, Pastor, but I'm not okay with the amount they give me. I said, I can increase it. Then as I'm talking about, so I just spoke with him. I said, go, it is increased. And they sent another money again. That same, <laughs> instantly. Another one. He didn't even contact them. They sent another one. <laughs> I said, that you may know that you see this thing is not joke there is power in our hot runs. so before i come to office i charge in the morning and i know <laughs> when i speak it comes to pass they they adopted a guy on thursday and the wife called me what the god called me low <laughs> what <laughs> they came to their place to adopt the man i said don't worry by this evening he's released and lo and behold in the evening the woman called me on friday morning he said as you said in the evening my husband was released no dime paid. Ladies and gentlemen, there's authority in your mouth. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Let's pray in the Holy Ghost. Leko shata barabosta. Bra lero dokte son na lero kupra di garosta zaka poradasta. This is how to function with the Spirit. Hakabaya gabaya. Hey, pray in the Holy Ghost and stir up the advocacy of the Spirit on your life. Malakos kelabos sheto predi gerosta. Mendele kupra ligerakto sopra ligerakta santele bo yagaba. Manga pro ligerade sopra ligerakta satra yagaboza. Lengere bo shanamande kipro para goroste se credi gerosta. Menga pala garasto sopra ligerokta se pro digerokta. Somebody pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray, 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 pray. If you couldn't pray in the Holy Ghost, open your mouth and pray right now. You are in field of God's Spirit. By the power of God, God's Spirit is resting on you right now. He's resting on your spirit. He's now is now your spirit your spirit is now the holy ghost mampra le gerosta zubra le gerosta membali ro kubo sheremonda manga pale gerosta zubra le gerosta membara dosta zipra le gerosta pare dosta zikre kerebo shakata manga pare bo se kopra le gerosta membra le gerosta zekro kepo zakata memba paya gerosta zubra le gerosta membro mani monte yeke eke zola hakse Somebody stir up in the Holy Ghost. Stir up in the Holy Ghost. I say stir up in the Holy Ghost. We are demonstrating the kingdom power here today. Mashota yagaboza. Memamande kebo prali roxte so prali gerosta. Rekebo za prali gerosta. Ekibo zakata. When I pray, yekebo shakata. My spirit has enabled by the Holy Ghost prayer. Mamamande, that is how the spirit prays. That is how the spirit prays. The Holy Ghost is now your spirit, for you are now one with Him. Mama Mande, I'm Pradibosadradia. That is how the spirit prays. When I speak in tongues, Makebosato Yagaba, Mama Mande Ebos Shanabarakata, Bebro Paradox, Zopreligas. 
is one essential way the Holy Ghost prays. Mama Mante, Yekebo Zaka Pradia, Larry Dosta, Zabraha do Zigarosta, Mega Prali Gorokta, Zopra Ligarosta, Mempali Rokta, Zopra Ligarosta, Badra de Garosta, Zebra de Garosta, Mabra de Garosto, Zopra Ligarosta, Legarokto, Zopra Ligarosto, Mandale Rodoxto, Zopra de Garosta, Mampale Rodoxte, Zopra Ligarosta, Mandale Rokto, Zopra Ligarosta, Mandale Rodogabo Shakata, Ratok Zegabok Zelabo di Zoprenia, Efroliga Dexo Legabo Shata, Mepa Prali Rakte, Zopra Ligarosa, Membro Liga Boxa, Labra Liga Rosta, Membo Lagarasto, Zopra Liga Rakta, Zagra di Garosta, Mengra de Gabox, the Zopra Liga Rosta, Membarabat Dog Zako Pradi Garosta, Mendale Rodog Zakra di Garosta, Babra Legabo Shakata, Mengabat Dos Zinamande, Mebra Liga Rog Dos Zolabota, Mampala Rosto Zubrelia, Mandale Rodosta Zakra di Garosta, Lago Shanamata Yagaba. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed? How many people believe they have authority? How many people believe that divinity has been transported into them? The Holy Ghost in you is God in you. I said the Holy Ghost in you is the almightiness of God in you. Ladies and gentlemen, all the power that created heaven and earth, even that created it at once, when God said, let the heart appear, and all the heart you see here came out of waters. It's not by heaven, it's by the Spirit hovering upon. The Spirit created everything. Psalm 104 and verse 29, He sent the Spirit, and the whole heart was recreated. Ladies and gentlemen, He is the man. Now, the fullness of the power of that Spirit is in you. It didn't come in a half measure. Ladies and gentlemen, the totality of the Holy Ghost came in you. Is that one and self same spirit? Do you know you have him now? Do you know the ability of God is available here? Are you ready to function as a king now? Are you ready to occupy that office as a king now? Do you know things can move right now? Mountains can jump right now. I mean, rivers can be blocked out right now. I mean, oceans can part right now. I mean, ladies and gentlemen, ways can be made in the wilderness right now. And rivers of waters can be made to flow in the desert right now. Ladies and gentlemen, he is here to turn aridity to prosperity. Are you ready for an encounter? Are you ready to decree? Now listen, in John chapter 14, and verse 11, that John 14, you know, we just quoted verse 10. Believest thou me that I am in the Father, the Father is in me. Now, verse 10, verse 11, Jesus now told us how it happens. He said, the words that I speak, the Father that dwelleth in me doeth the works. That means if he doesn't speak the word, the Father that dwelleth in him has nothing to do. The Holy Spirit is a place. He will keep hovering upon the waters until a word comes. Let there be. So, the spirit you are stirred up now that is moving now. Ladies and gentlemen, if there is no word of a king, there's nothing for that spirit to implement. And you know one thing, the exact thing that was said to him seven times. I mean, many times in Genesis chapter 1, the exact thing he did. Ladies and gentlemen, he won't do less for you. He's that one and self same spirit. If you decree money. You know on Friday, you know what I did? On Friday, I looked at my hands. I said, oh. I said, let me decree dollars today. You know, I've told you, I've said this thousands of times. And I decreed and I started laughing. Can you imagine? I said, come and see how dollars will fly to my hands today. Ladies and gentlemen, it flew to a point. I said, it flew to a point, I was amazed. There is, even people that I never believed that would give me dollars came to give me dollars. I met you, I started distributing dollars. Come and don't come and meet me. I've given everything out, to be honest. I've given everything out. So you were there. You, you got, okay. It, it was just flat. There is a, I was laughing after I said this in the morning before I left my house. Ah, when I know dollar there, she believed you go my fly seriously. <laughs> I just said it on my bed. I said, dollar, fly into this hand. <laughs> and I started laughing. <laughs> and it came to pass severally. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, whatsoever you see is ready to do it. Can you begin to speak? <laughs> Can you begin to decree over your life? Can you begin to decree right now? Oh, Larodo Shata, he's all over this place. Berado Shata, decree over your life right now by the power of the Spirit of God. Yakobos Kalaros Tesandalaros Teyegebo. 
Preliro ke palaros te sandal ero du shapaya. Mandala rodoks to sopra ligerok ta sandal ero kubaradaya. He has made you king to reign, the Bible said. To reign, can you decree as a king? A king does not suggest, he, he makes decrees. 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 Malebo Sato Pralikato Sakata. Mempale Rokubo Sakataya. Lekoboya, wherever there is the word of a king. There is power. Misato prali gerokte soketoya. Laka prali gerokte sendere bo shataya gaba. Mambra le gerokte supra li gerokta. Menga boxa laga prali gerokta. Libo prali roke sokata. Mangre kerabosha. Bebro pargosta. Lego pargosta. Libro marigote zelagosta. Menga la rosta zabra li gerokta. Prali ro seketoya. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, by the power of your ghost, 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 I command prosperity. Decree your house to be right now. Decree your cars, decree your jobs, decree your contracts, decree your fertility, decree your fruitfulness, decree your promotion, decree your elevation, decree your international breakfast, decree favor on your life. Oh, come on, decree. Now, by the power of the Holy Ghost, Yambalaro Sakato Yagaba, Lekebo Shanamante. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please permit me. I wish to have ended. I'm sorry for taking this long. But you know one thing? I couldn't just get off the glue of the Spirit. This is a prophetic ministry. Do you understand? We act as we are led by the Spirit. Amen. You know one thing, I'm telling you, the Holy Spirit tell, is, is telling me, he said for me, the greatest thing that you have been doing since December, worshiping, praising, fasting, he said it is today that the results have been established. We have been functioning as a priest, praising him and all that, but we've not taken time to decree. <laughs> now the Lord said you should look at somebody. Now please, if the person looking at you, you don't have confidence in the person. That this person I'm looking at, I don't think I have confidence. It may be your husband. Yes, I've got my bin no confidence. You know any me or Look for somebody you have sufficient confidence in. <laughs> now you know that God can answer the prayer of whatever this person decree can come to pass. Oh, come on, I like your laughter. Can 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 I face you? You have confidence in me. I have confidence in you too. Okay, now you're gonna look for somebody you have sufficient confidence in. <laughs> Ask the person, I said, Do you have confidence in me? That when I decree over your life, whatever I say will come to pass. Now, what do you want me to decree over your life, man? You gotta tell me now. Oh, my children will be set on the Yes. Yes, sir. Now, okay, what I want is. Now look at that person and begin to decree nothing right now. By the power of the Spirit of God, I decree over your life. It's done by the power of the Spirit. In the name of Jesus, Mama, you can rejoice. You can rejoice, it's done. I mean, rejoice, it's done. Glory. Parino Sakata Yagaba. Arakato Sabra di Gadoya. Lagabo Shakata Yagaba. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name. You do mighty things. You do glorious things. You're a faithful God. Awesome is your name.
We believe you have been blessed by this message. For more information, prayers, and counseling, you can reach us on the following numbers 080 33 706 938 and 080 28 28 1839. Or visit our website at www.dgccinternational.org and connect with us on our social media platforms facebook.com forward slash dgccintl instagram at dgccintl on youtube search divine glory christian church our twitter handle is at dgccintl stay blessed